This lesson is Geometry, Semester 2. It's the third unit, Solids, and it's the first lesson within Solids called Volume, so 0, 1, Volume, and versus Length and Area. So, Volume versus Length and Area Practice. It's on creatormath.com. It's under the Geometry tab. Copy the following problems 1 through 12 into your composition book on the correct pages according to the table of contents with the notes for those pages from creatormath.com. So don't forget the notes. These are problems I'm going through from SchoolG, right? So um, these will give you some background information, but the notes will fill in any kind of missing gaps in knowledge because this is not made to stand alone as a, a note set. It's made to stand alone as a practice set. All right. So with that given, here's the first question. Given the following unit, is it a length, an area, or a volume? So here's the unit they're talking about. Inches, power, one. What this lesson is going to teach us is the units on these different dimensions explain what we're talking about. So inches to the power one, again, this is in the notes from this uh, set of pages on, in, on Creator Math. But inches to the power one is a length, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just go to the second. You're going to see a definite pattern here. Given the following unit, is it a length, an area, or a volume? So now we're talking about inches to the power 2. So let's say it's written like this, inches squared, right? It, inches to the power 2 is the way you might type it into a computer. Inches squared the way a teacher might write it on the board or on a piece of paper like this. So what you have to understand is when we get to inches squared, we're talking about area. And let me do one more, and then I'm going to go back through all three and explain them in context to each other. Given the following unit, it is, is it a length, an area, or a volume? So now they're giving us inches to the power of three. So it might be written like this, inches cubed. And just to see, you know, most of the time, well, most of the time, all the time, we don't write an invisible one. Um, there is a three invisible one rule. And if it's inches to the power 1, we're just going to write inches. The three invisible ones are things like if you have a 5, there are three invisible ones. There's a 1 here, a 1 times, and a 1 divided by. We don't write all those three invisible ones. We just write 5. Fair enough. So anytime you see inches, there's three invisible ones. There's a 1, a 1, and a 1, just like these three here. So we're not going to write it. When we get to squared, we're going to write the 2. And when we get to 3, we're definitely going to write those because we need to designate it's not to the power 1. So there's sort of a default value, everything's to the power 1. Then we have to specify once we get squared, or in this case, cubed. Um, cubed is a volume. And I want you just to see what we have here. We have one dimension. And notice one dimension is to the power 1. You may see where we're headed here. 2 dimensions is to the power 2. And of course, the next one, right in line, three dimensions is raised to the power 3. So this is important for math because we jump between these dimensions. Now, dimension length is often a number line, right? Dimension area takes into account two number lines, a horizontal and a vertical, and it's known as a Cartesian coordinate graph system. You have an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis is horizontal or left to right. The y-axis is vertical or up and down. By the time we get to three dimensions, we add a third. So we draw it like this. We draw the x, we draw the y, and we draw a z coming out of the page or depth. So this one's an x-axis, this one is a y-axis, and this one becomes a z-axis. And now we have three dimensions, right? So volume is a three-dimensional measurement, raised to the power three. Area is a two-dimensional measurement, length times width, raised to the power two. Length is just a, a distance, and it is from one place to another, like a number line, the way you started way back when, with your first number line, right, that had zero in the middle, positive numbers to the right, negative numbers to the left, and it is to the power one. So one dimension two dimension, three dimension. That's where we're headed with this. So from here on out, this assignment gets a lot simpler once you understand that context. Given the following unit, is it a length, area, or volume? They're just sort of repeating this. Here they didn't use inches. They just used the generic unit. But it's raised to the power one, so it's a length. Anything to the power one is a length. Given the following unit, 
Is it a length, area, or volume? Raised to the power 2. It's an area, but now they're using the generic unit, right? We don't care what it is. It could be a mile, centimeter, whatever, kilometer. Doesn't matter. We're using a generic unit. Given the following unit, is it a length, an area, or a volume? We've got two cubes or three dimensions, three dimensions volume. Which of the following is a length? So this is interesting. Now they're going to reverse it for us and say, hey, I need a length. Is it miles, square miles, or cubic miles? Now, just to back up one second, the interesting thing is, why do they call, a lot of students don't know this, or they did at one time and they've forgotten, but why do they call anything to the power two square? Because when you're talking about a square and its area, you take one side times the other, and it's called side squared, right? That's why they use the square, because that's how you find the area of a square. Um, for cubic, it's a volume. Why do they call to the power 3 a cube? Because now we're talking about a cube with three dimensions, length times width times height. And when we multiply those together, it goes to cube. And if they're all the same length, s... S and S to find the volume of a cube, it's S to the power 3, hence why we call a power 3 cubed. Now they're dropping this into the assignment. Which of the following is a length? Is it miles, square miles? No, that's an area. Cubic miles? No, that's a volume. So the one distance to the power 1, got to be miles. Square is to the power 2, cubic is to the power 3. Which of the following is an area? The acreage of land which in a real estate, which in a, the acreage of land in a real estate purchase. I don't like the word which in there. It looks like a mistake. I'll see if I can pull that out for later. Um, the distance from one place to another. So this would be distance, this would be area, and the amount of gas needed to fill your tank is a volume. So um, which is an area? Acreage or area of land. Acre is a unit of area. Which of the following is a volume? The amount of gas needed to fill your tank. And the other simple one for volume, you guys, is the amount of Coke in a can of Coke. A lot of us love soda, right? I love soda, and I love Coca-Cola. And if you ask me how much Coke is in a can of Coke, it's a volume. It's, a, it's an amount of liquid, right? So the amount of gas needed to fill up a tank, that sounds a lot like, oh, it's a liquid amount filling something, like how much Coke is in a can of Coke. All right, this graph gets a little bit more difficult. I might take a little bit of time to explain it. They're going to ask us three questions. Given the following information, what is the perimeter of the face of a cube with side length 2? So there's a lot of data here. First, they're talking about a cube. So notice we have a cube here. And if I drew it my way, I'd draw two squares, offset, connect their corners. I have a YouTube video on that. Go watch those on how to draw a cube. The face of a three-dimensional shape is this here. Now, the face is the one closest to us. And I realize this three-dimensional shape is not drawn so easily for us to see that. But if I color it in a little, the face is the side of the shape closest to us. This is the face right here. So... They're talking about face perimeter, face area, and then volume of the shape. Three things, perimeter, area, volume. And what they're doing is changing it. They're starting with a side length of two. Then they're doubling it to a side length of four. Then they're doubling it again to a side length of eight. And they're talking about how the perimeter changes for this one to the next one to the next one. They're also talking about how the area changes with a side length two then to the area with a side length of 4, then to the area with a side length of 8. Then they're talking about volume with a side length of 2, volume with a side length of 4, and volume with side length of 8. And the idea is that we multiply each of these by 2. So go to 2 to 4, we multiplied it by 2. To go to 4 to 8, we multiplied it by 2. So we're doubling the side length of this cube every time. And the only thing I guess I don't like about this graphic is I wish this one had been drawn double the size, right? I don't know why that's not true. And then this one would be drawn double the size again to show that we're enlarging the cube double in terms of side length and double in terms of side length. And then we're analyzing how is the perimeter adjusted. So this is the way it works. We take the multiple of change. So when we're doubling it each time, that's 2. Because it's perimeter, 
perimeter is to the power 1. So 2 to the power 1 is 2. If I told you that this first one had a perimeter of 8, we're going to multiply it by 2, and we're going to get 16 on the next. And if we double it again, we're going to multiply it by 16 and get, or by 2, and get 32 units. So it gets multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 each time. Interestingly enough, every time we go to an area, now we're dealing with a change, double, 2, raised to the power 2. So this one's going to change by 4. So if our, fair, our area of the face right here is 2 times 2, or 4, we're going to multiply it by a 4 to get the doubling of the area. So by doubling the dimension, we get area that expands by the amount of expansion to the power 2. Why is it to the power 2? Because we're dealing with an area. So guess what? When we increase the side length by a volume, now we want to talk about the volume of this thing as the side length doubles. Now it's going to be 2 to the power 3 every time it doubles. So 2 to the power of 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 times. So for volume, if we just change one side length from 2 to 4, the volume jumps from 8 times 8 to 64. And when we double it again to 8, it jumps from 64 times 8 again. Okay? So this is the multiple here. Right, 2 to the power of 3, 8, 8 times 8 64. Here we go again, we're raising it now to this one, 8 cubed, 512, right? So they're asking us, um, given the following information, what's the perimeter of the face of the cube with a side length 2? They're just talking about this first measurement here, but what the graph is really showing you is what happens to these values, length or distance, area and volume, as the side length of that shape is doubled in this case or changed by some multiple. So notice I give you right here, just to circle this answer, it's kind of light down there, but it's eight units to the power one, because it's a length. Now there is some, given the following information, what is the area? Oops, sorry about that, get that in. This is the area of the face of the cube with side length eight, right? So. Area in this case of side length 8, let's go to side length 8. To find area, it's 8 squared, or 8 times 8, 64 units, so 64 units to the power 2. Notice they give you 64 units 1 and 3. The key that it, we're in the two dimensions is we're dealing with area. Let's jump to the next one because they're using the exact same graphic over and over and over. Nothing in this graphic changes. They're just asking you different up here. What's the volume of a cube? Right? Well, volume of 2 is 2 times 2 times 2. Right? And so side length 8, here it is here, 2 times 2 times 2, 8 units. And notice we're doing 8 units to the power 3, because we're talking about 3 dimension or cube. So this is complicated for students because they usually start by, you know, just measuring the distance of things and they don't pay attention to the units. Then they go to area and start to calculate base times height or length times width and they don't pay as much attention to the units as probably they should because now it becomes unit squared. And then the idea that jumping to three dimensions or volume, your units are going to be units times units times units because of the three dimensions and that comes out to be units cubed. So we can tell exactly what type of units we're going to have based upon whether we're dealing with volume, area, or distance. Again, find these notes under creatormath.com under the geometry tab down under the volume section, and this is lesson number one in that called volume versus length and area.